kumbira ubonda don't do that <laughs> don't do that to shop <laughs> the dry lens but i think it will be it will be very nice i mean on many subjects that we can cover for today uh, i have i've have seven major uh, streams of information because when you're doing public speaking sometimes and in a space where we are decolonizing the the the, the, the african mm-hmm. mind we needed to have thought through the process itself so that when we when we begin to attack the system we know exactly at which angle are we focusing on so on the top side is the is the politics and governance which speaks basically of the legalities the laws the frameworks of managing the black mind and how the colonial system is actually sitting there when you hear the young politicians even old politicians talking about the rule of law our constitution our this our that you know that it is a, it is a recited uh, information which is already is already showing that your mind has been captured to think that a colonialist method of governance is superior to your own indigenous method of governance so that needs to be decolonized so our opposition parties and our leading parties they don't need to get into power to manage a colonial system but to transform it because all the legal systems government institutions are bodies of restrictions for black people to break into the space of business so there are all the legalities you can't do this you must get a book for this you must get a regulation for this you must get a mm-hmm. certificate for this if you look at it very carefully and you end up finding out like even an issue of this uh, illegal miners who says they're illegal because a black man is holding gold is illegal mm. when an anglo has been digging here for donkey years they are legal miners why because the the governance system allows only a few people to hold the gold So even if you have gold underneath your house you can't hold it you can't because it's illegal you must yes. have a certificate from the government to so the legality part which for me becomes the very first which is the governance and legality needs to be decolonized mm. so that when a local person is holding their resources they can't be illegal mm. than the illegal multinational who is actually claiming that he has rights to your land and to hold your resources which you can't hold yourself and second on that will be the issue of education mm. which is what I would, what might want us to focus on the first part of the show itself. I think it would be nice to start with education. Yeah. Yeah. Uh, education and what is it? So I will I'll leave that. Because that's what we're going to be discussing. Mm. And on the third part of that is the business and commerce. And, and what what informs that? And there is banking also, right in the business space. Mm. Who is allowed to do business and who can't do business and what kind of business? What are the means of transactions? And, and where is the money being kept and how is it recycled? Can they, how do black people get finances and how do they pay back their loans what are these sureties and who has the access to the land which is the surety for the bank and insurances it's all this structure where you find that the business sits on when they are saying our economy is doing well yes. you hear them talking in an exciting way our economy and you look at them very well and say are you sure it is your economy which part of it is yours mm-hmm. you are all servants and slaves here it's about employment to you as black people mm-hmm. to them it's about ownership 100%. So it's your governance systems, then comes your, your, your education, then comes your business and, 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 and commerce, and thirdly on that it will come agriculture. Agriculture and what does it inform? Who supplies food for us? Mm. We need to decolonize even the food itself, what we drink and what we eat, mm. because what we, we what, without knowing it, the next level which is the health, speaks to that because what we eat results in how we are being treated. Yes, so, and the lots of rules there again. Who plans what? Who does not plan what? Which health system is acceptable? which medications are acceptable which ones are not acceptable and acceptable according to who mm. i mean the other day talking about the mclonian are here and say you know we have not done tests like hell no testing what when all people have been drinking this for the past 3 5000 years they've been testing years. it they've been testing which it other, which centuries. other tests do you want to test ugudu mclonian yase benza when amakhutman are telling you that this is how we've been living for that according to whose standards yeah. according to whose standards then last but not least on that then you have your entertainment and sporting even now people are excited about sports 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 but look at it i mean you look at mlava lava the old game which was mathematical mm. two here three there four there roll them around in the calculator in the adding rather than just boys chasing a skin of a dead ox you know which, which is a dead mind game i'm sorry for sorry for soccer lovers i'm, I'm a pirate munyate <laughs> me i'm a chelsea i'm a man united me i'm a highlander people buy Jeez. highlander wavango wave highlander yeah. Zimbabwe, people man. buying sure. uniforms and jerseys to highlanders and zim sure. yeah yeah <laughs> so you look at our entertainment and sports and how much colonization has gone in there yeah what we say sports right now it's cricket it's rugby 
it's soccer, it's snooker, it's what? And look at our African games. It's tennis. And, and, yeah. Mm. Mm. And sports are so what, what how, how are they building us, I think, mm. is what he's touching on. Yeah, I guess. I and, guess. and again, you find that a black man running a, an African company, he will take money to invest into white games. And what makes these games alive is simply because people are able to put money into it. The other day, mm. I noticed people were climbing trees. This is a sport. Can you believe? Mm. Climbing trees, literally, like... Riding bicycles. So can't we find our own indigenous games and make them commercial and also be able to put money into that? Then that speaks also to fashion mm. and, and clothing. And lastly, number last, that's my department, spirituality and religion. So when you look, when you're looking at the colonization mm. as a project itself on these seven pillars, then you need to understand that many people now rush to me when I'm talking about the Jesus story. Now they want to come and toy toy around me and say, hey, I'm fine. leave me with religion. There are six other departments there that equally need your mind. So all of us, professionally in our various spheres of skills, mm. we need to go back into those uh, spheres and influence the transformation and the decolonization that we need. So that not one man fighting only from the religious corner. But instead, the commercial guys must come forward, creating new banks, new insurance mm. companies. You know, the education guys must come in, creating new curriculums. The innovations and agricultural guys must be coming with indigenous plants and foods and diets and drinks and what. And, 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 and so that the revolution burns the whole bush. Mm. For me, that becomes an, an all-inclusive. Mm. So, do, all so don't come on these platforms and complain about what Spoo is doing and what Panuel is not doing, mm. what Maponga is not doing. People always have recommendations. You must be doing this. You must yes. be doing this. I said, hell no. I don't work for you. Find your space in the struggle. Yes. Take your skills there. Start the transformation, even in small little things. Let the revolution be for all of us. Mm. Over 10 years. Jeez. Education, please keep going. Tina Education. Education. Education, formal and informal. Formal again, according to who? Informal, according to who? This is funny. Because what you call informal education is actually the formal education. Because the informal education prepares you to work. Actually, it is the education that is not written on paper. Mm. It is what you do as you learn. Mm. And you learn as you do. Whereas the formal one is where you must do the bookish knowledge system first in a university. And in conclusion, then you must write a CV. Mm. Then you... You show us what you have studied, but you can't do it. Then you say you're educated. <laughs> so the African education is called informal. Yeah, of course. The but, one that actually is practical. But informal education yeah. creates some of the most sophisticated things that you can ever imagine, mm. which CN CNC machines would struggle to make. Mm. And we call that informal education. But when you look, let me just look maybe squarely well into what they call the formal education structure. And maybe sp speak of its advantage first mm. and its disadvantage next. The advantage of the formal education, it standardizes knowledge systems across the globe so that you are able to know what everybody else knows around the world there. Mm. Beautiful. It's a waste of time in that the greater percentage of what you're studying from primary school to university is totally junk in the bag. You will not even remember what you studied. That's a fact. That's why parents struggle to help their children with the homework. Yeah. Because it's not practical. You learned it, but you learned it. No, we used to spot my exam papers and see which one is coming. And then if you strike the one that is coming, share my aim. Sure. So how what what gaja is to study paper wrong, you know? So kids memorize answers. And because you can regurgitate those answers, you are called educated. Sometimes if I forgot the spare my exam. <laughs> I've heard those There's stories. Matiana, we have so much concern. We have a student number. I've heard those stories. I've got time to make mine. I don't have time I've to heard be those sitting there listening to the lecture. The whole year. No, sure. I'm hustling on campus, bro. Mm. Yeah, yeah. So if, if you look at our education system, maybe let me not waste time with arguments. Let me go exactly what I want to say then we can actually be able to, we can engage on this one. Yes, sir. I, I feel I want to give you, for this afternoon in the Hustlers Corner, I want to give you a template, a blueprint mm. of what I think education should be like, particularly yes. for the African child post 21st century. Our education must not be from learning to employment. Our education must be from problem to solution. Mm. 
let me clarify that. What, I, what do I mean by that? It means that a student firstly goes, goes into the community, mm. takes off their shoes, and they walk around the community. Mm. They identify the problems in the community, be it water, be it transport, be it communication, be it food, be, be it anything mm. that you identify. Then after you have identified your problem, then you must come up with what I call a position paper or a proposal. Write a piece of paper. D not make it complicated like the mm. business plan. Just explain what you have seen and what kind of a problem it is. Mm. How the people are feeling about the problem and how do you feel about the problem. Mm. Take that piece of paper. Walk up to an academic institution and study for the next three to four years how to solve this particular this problem. problem that is in my community. Mm. And while you are studying, you start networking. Who can bring solutions mm. into the same problem? By the time you complete studying here, mm. you actually have a business plan. Yes. If the government was serious in terms of youth development funding, this is the group that needed to be funded. Mm. Who already have studied the problem for four years. Enough practicals, enough theories. Mm. By the time they get out of university, they got to implement the solution which they identified and they have studied. Mm. And now they're implementing. And, and I think it, it creates a seamless value chain between the students and their network. Mm. And them amassing the resources in the community and creating their own businesses, which for me is a perfect solution. So instead of having universities that are waiting for students to come and say, what am I supposed to study? Mm. <laughs> and after they finish studying, they still don't know where they're going to work. And then we talk about unemployment. You're, that, you're, you're suggesting the other way. The student must approach the institution yes. with documented problems the in detail. The institution, These are the problems I want you guys to help me to solve. That, then, then all the professors become referrals. Imagine in Tuane, we are going to start the radio station. When I, DJ Esbu, you are the, you are the teacher there. Mm. So what are you going to be doing in that radio station? For the next four years, in Tuane, Lay, if you want develop a content. <laughs> okay, I'm a morning show, some fun. So I say what driver guys. Afternoon lunch, see shy guys. Afternoon drive, you better guys. Night drive, share guys. Other people, you are, you are there now as a source of information and experience. Mm. So people like us will be sitting in the university there to share information with the young people. In yes. that case, you don't need to be a doctor and a professor. Mm. If, if anyone wants to write a book, for example, I've done 15 books in total. I cannot fail to, to, to share information on how to write, how to read, how to proofread, what systems do you need to place your book out there and package it and etc. So that universities actually become ref reference centers mm. of problem solving rather than regurgitating centers of telling us in what other people have done in the past. And one something, these guys who are senior lecturers in commerce, mm. Mdawan has never done even a business. He's a poor guy. That is but true. He, he's giving you all the research on how to make money and how to, uh, what, what, how does a business and economy work? Mm. And he, how, how can you teach me entrepreneurship? You've never sold even a toothbrush mm. or a toothpick. So you find that our universities must actually be populated with real mentors who are the lecturers. And by mentors, I mean people who have walked the path, who have the experience. The young people come into class, informal class or formal class, mm. to be sharing experiences. So, so after you've done the water, you know, how is it going to help me who wants to do agriculture? Mm. And you wanna, we have done in your agriculture. How am I going to assist because I want to do transport? Okay, me, I'm not do transport. So how am I going to assist because I want to do fuel? And, 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 so, and then you begin to look at these communities are studying not away from themselves. Mm. They are studying back into themselves. Right now, the education system we have is a passport of escaping poverty in Africa. 100%. Immediately you hold your degree. The next thing you want is a passport. Yes. Here we are as commercial immigrants from Zimbabwe. Graduated, two degrees behind my back, my passport. And where, where, where can I work? Where can I work? Then students are slowly and quickly migrating away from their problems and leaving their parents and families in the same poverty that they were in, to be looking for employment elsewhere. By the time we are talking about immigration and other things, let's not talk about that. Let's talk about a poor education program that made you so educated that you became irrelevant to your own community. I'm a commercial immigrant myself from Guazulu. I came to Johannesburg for money after being educated. Even this whole Dudula process, we must be careful because 60% of everyone in Johannesburg is migrant labor children. Mm. Let's, be, let's be honest. Let's be honest. 
It's my grand liver. Real, realistically, because we understand how strong the, the colonization project is. We understand how powerful capitalism is. Mm. Do you think realistically it's possible for us to decolonize and decommodify education so that it's solving problems? There's an amazing song by Dead Press called uh, They Schools mm. that I listened to in varsity. And it's, it was a huge awakening for me during that whole phase. And it's a school I recommend for a lot of our squatters, They Schools by Dead Press. Mm. And it speaks about at the end how their schools are not teaching us how to solve their, our own problems, mm. how to get our families to work together, how to get our fathers back in the home. Mm. 